again and welcome back to the Fatfish Guitar Studio. I'm Dave and this is another video in the series Tone Talk. A series of videos looking at guitar equipment and effects and all that sort of stuff and talk about, talking about how to get the best sound for you. Now I've done a few of these videos now and I thought what I'd do in this one is just kind of talk about some general things to bear in mind when it comes to getting your, getting your sound. So what I did this morning was I sat down with some coffee and just kind of jotted down some, I wouldn't call them rules, that sounds a bit strict, but some some sort of ideas and key concepts to think about when you're uh, looking at building a guitar tool. So in no particular order, here we go. So setting your tone by ear rather than eye. What I mean by this is it's good to know what settings you have on your amp you know that you have the, the bass control set to six and mid set to seven or whatever. But those shouldn't be like absolute values. You know, on my my amp, my effect board, if you completely messed around with my settings and I had to get, get back to what I wanted, I can kind of rough them in by eye. So I know, you know, on, the, on each control how I would have it set. But I wouldn't use that as the absolute. What I would do is actually play and listen to how things sound and then make adjustments. So, that, and this is particularly useful to bear in mind if you go from one place to another, because from you know venue to venue or from room to room, the the way that the, the room reacts to to sound, what frequencies it reflects, or which frequencies that absorbs, will vary. And you need to make adjustments to your sound to take that into account. You know, if you go somewhere that really reflects a lot of bass frequencies, then you might need to turn the bass down slightly on your EQ just to compensate, things like that. Knowing what your settings are is good so you can get them in there roughly by eye, but at the end of the day, you need to uh, listen, hear how things sound and let your ears rather than your eyes tell you how your effects and uh, amp and whatnot should be set. The way that your amplifier response to sound varies depending on how loud it is. So if you set your rig up like a, bed, a bedroom volume and then think, okay, this is, this is my sound, then you go to like a band practice or something, you crank things up, the, the voice of your amplifier will be different. It, you know, it's moving the speakers, it's shifting air. Um, and the louder you are, you're playing, the, the more air it's shifting. And that does actually affect the acoustic response of the amp a little bit. So this kind of links to the earlier point about, uh, you know, setting things with your ears. When you go somewhere and you're playing at a particular volume, you may need to tweak settings slightly to, to kind of fit in with the volume that you're playing at. But you can make your life a lot easier by actually getting your settings and having an idea of what your settings should be by setting them at the volume that you're going to be playing when you're playing live or with a band or recording or whatever. All too often, I've seen people trying to set uh, you know, effects or, or whatever, and they just kind of go in and they're tweaking knobs at random. If you do that, you will possibly eventually end up with what you want, but it'll take you an awful lot longer to get there. Think about what you're hearing. Think about what the controls on the pedal or on the amp or whatever allow you to do. And think about what it is you're trying to change. Now, if you're listening to a, a chorus sound and it's just a little bit too wobbly, chances are you need to adjust the rate and slow it down a little bit. If you're listening to a chorus and it's just like not, not chorusy enough, then possibly you need to take the depth control and crank that up a bit. Just thinking, I don't like the sound of this chorus effect and just tweaking knobs at random in the hope that you'll get something. It's a very, very inefficient way of doing it. So think about what the controls allow you to do. Think about what you need to change and adjust accordingly. Let's say, for example, you're trying to set up a guitar tone, something that's going to cut through a little bit. So you've got your basic tone, you've got a little bit of drive there, and you think, well, what can I do to just make it make it cut through? I'll, I don't know, I'll try adding some modulation, so I'll put a light bit of chorus in there. Oh, it's still getting lost in the mix. What else can I do? Well, I could put a bit of phaser in there. You start adding modulation effects, and you're still not getting there. Actually, might, what it might be is you just your EQ's wrong. 
if you're chasing a tone and you're just adding effect to effect to effect, if you get to the point where you're just not getting anywhere, stop, go back to first principles. Don't just keep adding things and tweaking things in the hope that you're going to chase down that elusive tone. Be prepared to admit defeat with your, your, your current course of action. Go back to first principles, think about what you want and start again. It, so it's it will be so much more efficient for you. So sort of related to the previous point is if you just keep adding effects and adding effects, it can stifle your tone. You know, some guitarists can get away with adding lots and lots of effects because they're very, very effecty type players. But a lot of times what you actually want to hear is the sound of the guitar. And if you're adding loads and loads of different effects, it, it just kind of dilutes everything down and you're not hearing the purity of the guitar tone and sometimes when you're playing it's just not as responsive so be aware of adding too many effects one sort of inverse to that is overdrive and distortion as i've said in a previous video adding one quite saturated drive effect is often not as, not as pleasing to the ear and not as responsive as adding two or possibly three light gain stages and stacking them up. And that's the exception to the rule. You can have uh, possibly a few, a few light gain stages, but generally be aware of adding too many effects into your tone. Yeah, when you think about heavy music, you think about hard rock, you think about metal, you naturally think about distortion and overdrive and saturated tone. For some styles of music, you will get a much heavier tone and a much better tone by actually dialing the gain back. Thinking about using EQ to punch through with the right frequencies is more effective than just adding more and more gain to your sound. As you add a lot of gain and distortion, you lose definition, the sound becomes mushy. Think about less gain, more subtle, more effective EQ, or even running something where you've got a bit of clean signal mixed in with the, over, with the, the dirty signal as well to give you a bit more definition. When you're shopping for gear, it's tempting to look at the, the number of features that something has and think that's going to be the better unit than something which gives you less control over your tone. It's a trap I've fallen into myself and I've known lots of other people do it. But be careful. Don't buy features, buy, buy results. Really good example, I think the first distortion pedal I ever got, what I actually needed was a fairly high gain overdrive. The sound that I had in my head was a fairly high gain overdrive. But when I went to my local music store, the range of effects there, your standard overdrive, distortion pedal sort of territory, you know, volume, gain, and tone. But there was this one pedal that had volume, gain, bass, and treble. Four knobs rather than three. Now I thought that's gonna give me more flexibility it's going to give me more options. What I actually got was a pedal with a basic sound which I didn't need, but I could tweak. But because the basic sound was wrong for me, no matter how much I tweaked it, I couldn't get the sound that I actually needed. It's much better to get something that does the job that you want with fewer features rather than something that's got tons of features to allow you to tweak something that's not what you want to get it slightly closer to what you want but it's still not the sound you're after so beware of features always go for something that was going to do the job for you even if it's a simple one knob pedal if it does the sound that you want that's the right tool for the job this is something else i haven't really I've talked about in a previous video about setting the eq and setting your effects to give you a particular sound if you do it in isolation you might get a sound that's really good and you really like it but once you get into a band context you get lost in the mix so you need to understand who you're playing alongside what what parts of the sonic spectrum they're taking up and making sure that you kind of complement them both in terms of the frequencies that you're using and just like your general sound you need to be part of an ensemble. If you, you're just using loads and loads of bass, 
you're going to get lost in the area where your bass players uh, using up using up the sound sound spectrum, and you're not going to be heard. Likewise, if you've got just tons and tons of treble, but you you've got a drummer who uses lots of cymbals, you're going to have times where your guitar signals are not cut through because it's getting lost in all the treble coming from the from the drums. And be honest, that you won't hear the drums as well because they're getting led into your your guitar signal. So think about where you sit in the sonic spectrum cooperate and complement those that you're playing with. This one isn't so much about sound, it's more practicality. When you lay out your pedal board, if your pedal board's anything like mine and you've got so many pedals that you need more than one row, think about where they are. You don't have to put them in the order of your signal chain, you can go backwards and forwards a little bit, which is exactly what I do. The pedals I need to get to most frequently are on the front row, so I get to them nice and easily without worrying about stepping over and knocking anything. The ones that's on the back row tend to be the always-on pedals or the ones that I, I, I go to less frequently. So if I need to be a bit more measured, put my foot over the top of the other pedals to press something down, I'm not worrying you know, so much about hitting other pedals because I I, I'm doing it less often if it's a, if it's a pedal that's on and off all the time then I want that near the front where I can get to it easily. When you first start off on your guitar journey, you're going to be strictly mono. The guitar into some pedals and into an amp, possibly and then into an effects loop and back into the amp, but it's running in mono. There's some really interesting options available to you if you think about splitting your signal with like an AB or ABY pedal and having things like uh, a clean signal path and a dirty signal path, you know, running to two separate amps, or running something like wet dry, where you've got modulation effects only happening on one amp, or using modulation effects and time-based effects uh, in stereo, in running two amps to give you something nice and wide in the stereo spectrum. It's something you need to sit down and think about uh, much more in terms of planning your signal path. You know, pen and paper is, is a really useful tool. But don't constrain yourself to just a, a simple mono signal path. Experiment with things like multipath, and there's a lot of options out there. Your guitar equipment is just a means to an end. This thing here is meant to be played. It's a tool of the trade for making music. If you're spending more time investigating gear, um, you know, watching YouTube videos and reviews of um, different pedals and different amplifiers to try and think about the tone. If you're spending more time doing that than you're actually spending practicing, you just need to stop and reassess your priorities. It's like having a car, you know, and then spending all your time in the garage tweaking it and worrying about, well, you know, could I put a different exhaust manifold on there? Would it improve the performance? Yes, it's it's fun to sit and tinker with your, with your car and get your fingers dirty and oily now and again, but ultimately you should be getting that car out onto the road and driving it. Similarly, this thing should be playing some music. It shouldn't be just something that I'm, I'm sitting here test driving tons and tons of pedals trying to get my guitar tone. If, you, if, you, if you're doing that, you, you've completely missed the point. Reassess your priorities. This music is about playing, not about tinkering, trying to trying to get the right, just the right drive pedal or or whatever. You need you need to keep that in mind. So let's say that you've got the guitar that you like, you've got the amp that you like, you've got a pedal board with all the effects that you want, you've got them set up just right, and you go out and do a gig. When I'm watching you play your gig, I want to watch you play a gig. I don't want to watch you just constantly tap dancing on pedals. That's not what it's about. I remember going to a gig in a local pub back end of last year. Just, you know, the standard rock covers band in a, in a, in a, in a bar on, fri on a Friday or Saturday night. And the guitar player had something like a Strat and he had a Kemper, which seemed a bit overkill for just playing a fairly small pub in, in Northumberland. And he had the full Kemper effects pedal board. And three or four times during every verse, three or four times during every chorus, he was doing pedal changes. And to be honest, I couldn't hear the difference. And I just didn't see the point of it. But I wasn't interacting with him. I wasn't kind of engaging with him as a, as a guitarist. 
because he wasn't looking at me. He was just constantly looking at his feet and what, what pedal he was going to switch, switch in. So you, you shouldn't really be needing to just tap dance on pedals that much during a song. Get the sound that works and play and enjoy it and keep eye contact with your audience and interact with people, engage with the, the other people that you're on stage with. Don't just be staring down at your, at your pedal board. The pedals give you a sound um, to help you play the music, but they're not the reason you're there. The pedals are there to help you play with the sound that you want, and your job is to play the guitar. Your job is not to drive the pedals, if you see what I mean. So, yeah, use pedals to give you sound, but it's, it's not just about driving your pedal board. I've seen a lot of people use uh, gear as a, a substitute for hard work or practice or, or trying to be creative. And genuinely, there are going to be times when you just get stuck in a complete rut and you're going out and you know, buying a new pedal to give you a new sound or you know, even more extreme, getting a new guitar will help to, help to just get you out of that fog and you'll you start to get creative again but that's pretty extreme every time you're feeling a bit bored you can't justify just going to the guitar shop and buying a new a new guitar you know even if you just experiment with what you've got you know set yourself a little a little challenge like i've got this guitar with three pickups and volume controls and tone controls and pickup switching right what i'm going to do is just set one pickup and play and I'm going to get my sounds purely by tweaking the tone control rather than switching pickups. Something different to what I would normally do. But if I do that, it might make me think about the guitar and approach it slightly differently and that might help help get my creativity going again. Going to my pedals, just trying some different settings, get some different sounds. I don't need to go out and buy new pedals, just play around with the ones I've got. Or put the electric guitar down, pick up the acoustic, go into a completely different tuning, just noodle around, but it'll get your creative juices going again. Don't think that you can kind of like buy yourself out of a rut or buy creativity by going out and buying a new pedal. That's, that's not true, you're just kidding yourself. It's a sad fact of life that there is no ideal guitar tone for you. Uh, your guitar journey will be punctuated by bad purchases, things that you think are going to do the job for you, but actually when you come to live with them, it's not quite the right sound for you. It wasn't quite the right pedal decision. You know, certainly I've I've made some some dubious decisions in my pedal buying in, in the past. I'm sure every guitarist I know has, whether they whether they admit it or not. But even once you've got a sound that you like, your tastes will change or your musical style will change slightly and evolve as you as you pick up new techniques and you listen to other music and you get other influences and then you might want to start swapping pedals in or out or uh, even changing the style of guitar that you use going from something with single coils to something with humbuckers or whatever it doesn't necessarily mean what you had at one point was a bad choice it's just your um your tastes evolve and your your your, your rig will evolve with them so don't get despondent thinking, I've, I just can't find the right tone. You might find that actually you have found the right tone for you several times, but then your tastes have changed and you've moved on, moved on beyond that. Okay, this is probably the most important piece of advice I can give you about your guitar tone. And it comes from experience of teaching people for years and years and years, and there's been one common fault I think I've seen with probably every student that I've, I've taught um, people that I know friends family who've got um, who've got kids who are learning guitar and you know I've talked to them and so you know so-and-so's got a new guitar what do you think of it and you try it and every every guitarist has the same fault and if you incorporate this idea into your playing you will have a better sound you will have a better tone you'll have a better playing experience your general quality of life will be better. My, my advice to you is this. Change your f***ing strings. <laughs>